agent and multiplied in points. Have you ever had an infection on your skin create fluid before? Yeah, most likely. I got this thing on my back. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll take a look at that later. Um, <laughs> right now, let's, let's talk about pneumonia. Um, so some of these bugs can cause a fluid-like pus that collects in your lungs. Uh, and as it builds up and consolidates, it can get harder and harder to cough this fluid up and out. Does that make more sense now? Yeah, so you, you get an infection, and then the body's own reaction to the infection is causing pneumonia. You said some of the bugs cause fluid. Do some bugs not cause fluid? Right, very good listening. So some <laughs> bugs don't cause the fluid. Our body's inflammation and reaction to bacteria causes the fluid, we call it exudate, uh, and viruses don't cause this. So this is not typical with your type, which is based on where you got the germs. So in your case, healthcare associated with them, <coughs> which is commonly viral or origin like the flu. So this uh, the infection is causing pneumonia can be from over 30 different causes. So looking at those causes is important. Oh, I see. So I have healthcare associated pneumonia, and I have a bacterial infection. Uh, this infection is my own reaction to the, the pneumonia. And there's, so there's only 30 causes of pneumonia. Uh, even the flu. Oh, very interesting. You're such a good teacher. Thank you. <laughs> so I also want to talk to you about what can cause pneumonia and what are some risk factors for getting pneumonia again in the future. Uh, so pneumonia is more likely to occur when the defense mechanisms in our throat don't work or if they're attacked by infectious agents. Um, so some of the ways these defense mechanisms in our throat can be broken down is through decreased consciousness, which lowers our cough reflex, uh, air pollution, cigarette smoking, or respiratory infections. So some diseases, like diabetes and leukemia, are also associated with an increased amount of non-normal flora in the respiratory tract. Um, some specific organisms, though, that can cause hospital-acquired or healthcare-associated pneumonia, the kind you have, um, are Staphylococcus aureus, E. coli, or Streptococcus pneumonia. So these can reach our lungs through inhaling uh, microbes already present in the air, inhaling normal <coughs> organisms from our upper respiratory tract, or by spreading through our blood system from infection elsewhere in the body. Oh, it sounds like pneumonia has a lot of causes. Why are we? I like to smoke sometimes. Should I stop? Well, <laughs> smoking is one of the main risk factors for pneumonia. If you want to try to stop smoking, we can have one of our other nurses talk to you later and help the way to do that. Factors for pneumonia are normal aging, chronic diseases like diabetes, lung disease or cancer, the drugs that are used to treat those diseases, not eating healthy, and not spending too long not being out of bed. So in terms of the specific kind of pneumonia that you have, some risk factors for that are smoking, lack of flu vaccine, inadequate oral care, or being a resident in a long term <coughs> care facility. Well, okay. I, I haven't gotten a, a flu vaccine, so I should probably talk to the doctor about that. I guess, should I move out of the healthcare facility where I'm at now? Do you avoid getting pneumonia? No, you don't have to move out of your home to avoid getting sick. So what that risk factor means is that there might be other people living near you who have pneumonia, and they could give it to you easier because you live close by. So while they might be coughing, they're passing along those germs to you. So what you can do is if you know anyone who has pneumonia or the flu, you can try to avoid contact with them until you're feeling better. So speaking of knowing who has pneumonia, my colleague, Julie,
flu or chicken pox and cough pneumonia and um, things like that. Yeah. Very good. Thanks for all the great information. You know, I know a lot here now. I'm glad. And that pretty much completes my instructions. I believe you'll be feeling better very soon, Gladys. Thank you.